Cool. So, hey everyone that's listening. We have no idea who is. <laughs> this is fantastic. But um, welcome. This is the first official Chrome Developer Hangout. And uh, today's topic is Chrome for Android Beta, which as you may or may not know, we launched last week. So maybe we'll go around the table. We have a few guests here, and uh, we'll do some introductions. So Marcos? Hello. Uh, I'm Marcos. I'm working in the Google London office, and uh, I'm here for, for a couple of weeks. Um, nice to see you, everybody. Peter? Uh, my name is Peter Bibleu. I'm a software engineer in the Google, uh, Google Chrome team, also based in London. Um, and I'll be here to answer questions. And Hi. <coughs> I'm John Nuttenbelt. Uh, I'm also from the London office. And uh, um, we, uh, I've, I've mainly been uh, working on various uh, uh, various uh, JavaScript APIs uh, and uh, support. Mm -hmm. And I'm Boris Moos, engineer for Chrome Developer Relations, based here in Mountain View. So my focus has been on uh, Chrome for Android lately. So I guess we'll start off um, just as an intro. We launched last week. And uh, the current state of affairs is uh, it's ice cream sandwich only. So you can get it from the market, but only if you have uh, an ice cream sandwich device. And it's only launched in some countries. And we're working hard to expand that list. So uh, I think I'll start off with just giving you a quick overview of some of the user features. And uh, hopefully you can see this phone here. So I'll unlock it. And this is the basic interface of Chrome for Android. So you can see we've completely redesigned the uh, UI to suit the mobile form factor. But essentially, it's the same Chrome experience on your Android device. So uh, one of the key integrations here is that we have sync enabled in Chrome for Android. And that brings your Chrome bookmarks, Chrome history, and tab sync to your uh, Android device. So just as a quick illustration here, I can see the same uh, recent viewed page as on desktop. And this is all synchronized. I can see my bookmarks, again, also synchronized. And this is a, a new feature, tab sync. And here, these are, this is a list of both machines that are, that are logged into my uh, account. And I can see all the open tabs from the last sync uh, that, uh, that happened on, that, on those machines. So uh, that's sort of the, the functionality you get from, from Chrome Sync. One of the most important features of Chrome, though, is speed, right? So uh, we've, well, the Eng team has put in a lot of effort to make this a truly fast browsing experience. And one of the, one of the, the great things here is we have pre-rendering. So if, if I go to start typing a URL in the Omnibox, at the New York Times and visit that, then loading is, uh, is accelerated by pre-caching while I'm typing so that when we actually load the page, it's immediately loaded. And, um, and, and when the page is actually uh, rendered, you can see scrolling is very performant here. So as I'm sure the, uh, these guys will tell you, the last three or so months have been <laughs> largely spent on, on getting this to 60 frames second, and, and they've done a great job, so, so this is really great to see. Um, let's see. Also, we have uh, this tab management UI, and it supports a whole bunch of, you can have a lot of tabs open. I don't even know if there's a limit. Maybe there is. Um, but the, the great thing that Chrome does to make this happen is it's very aggressive about uh, storing inactive tabs, essentially saving them to uh, like swapping them out of, of memory and only ca keeping one or two active tabs in the foreground. So this, this makes the experience very fast, even if you have a lot of tabs open. OK. But I must say my favorite feature is, as a developer, web developer, uh, remote debugging. So I'll quickly give you a run through of how this looks. So. Um, I guess I should screen share at this point, yeah? OK, I'll screen share. And now I'll screen share my terminal here. So the way you get this going is 
you um, run this command to forward the port. So firstly, I have my device obviously plugged in through USB. You run the command, and then uh, this will enable forwarding. Uh, and you, you then need to enable the feature. Let me switch back to the uh, camera here. You need to enable remote debugging inside Chrome for Android. And here I can, it's already enabled. And at this point, I can go back to my browser. I'll just share my Chrome window here. Whoa! Oh my <laughs> <laughs> Hope you like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all from the developer tools. That's amazing. You get this inception view. <laughs> we need to go deeper. <laughs> okay. So hopefully people can see this. I'll just hit localhost on the port that I forwarded to. And um, and here, we now have a list of all the open tabs in Chrome. And at this point, I can go into any of these tabs and inspect them. And here, I have full access to the uh, Chrome developer tools. So I wish I could show you both screens at once. But um, whoa, here we go again. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You can see I can I can inspect pages, and when I select this element, you know the the same hover effect happens in uh, Chrome for Android. So let me just I'll do an alert in in the JavaScript console, just to and switch cameras and then prove to you that this is actually working. So there's my alert, and this is this is great. So you can fully instrument your uh, Android browser and get everything you need out of your actually running the mobile website on the device. So, uh, Boris, if you uh, slide through the elements on, on the HTML, you should be able to see them go blue. On the, yeah. Uh, I think that's really a cool feature. Yeah, for sure. It's a great feature. I would love to show it. The thing is, you can't. I can't figure out a way right now to, to show both. Scroll on there. <coughs> Why don't you try scrolling on the laptop, and we can see as things sort of get highlighted on the uh, on the Android phone. <coughs> okay, I'll I'll try this. And there you go. So you guys can yeah. see. I'm I'm scrolling now on the laptop. Yeah. You can't see me scrolling, but you can certainly see the highlights. So, very very handy feature. Okay, so uh, as far as other uh, HTML5 features go. I've got some uh, basic demo here just to give you a sense of what the platform is capable of. So first, we've implemented uh, fixed positioning and overflow scrolling. So this is pretty, a pretty common pattern in a lot of mobile web user interfaces. So here you can see a, a really simple test page. I've got uh, a header and a footer, and they're fixed, whereas the uh, middle section is scrolling. So here, this is implemented. With the header is implemented with position fixed, same as same with the footer, and then the middle section has uh, the, this div element has an overflow scroll or overflow auto maybe on it. So this this gives you this native like experience, and you'll notice also that uh, if I scroll and let go, I get this inertial feel, which it's the same as what you'd expect in a in a native application. Um, let's see, Flexbox model. Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about Flexbox. Um, but basically, we have support for the first version of Flexbox, um, not yet the second. But this this spec is pretty neat. Um, I don't know if you chime in. The flexible box module basically allows you to do more, more a more a much more declarative way of defining the shape of your layout. Um, thinking more in terms of objects, which you can rearrange using CSS, uh, position and scale using CSS instead of uh, fixed width or even percentage base, uh, based widths. Um, and it basically allows you to create complex layouts, um, update them really easily uh, with much less effort than before. Yeah, it's, it's uh, like, for example, this one here is uh, there's a, uh, a Flexbox 
indicated in the top level that says, I want a vertical flow from header to this middle section to footer. And then the middle section is implemented with a horizontal flow saying, go from nav to content to sidebar. So instead of doing things like CSS floats and then worrying about clear fixes, you can just implement things declaratively. And the markup here is beautiful. It's very simple, it's clear, and very semantic. OK. Oh, yes, my favorite. So multi-touch. Uh, we've come a long way here. And this is, um, so Android uh, at Gingerbread, I think, had a lot of, oh, yeah, sorry. So Gingerbread had a lot of uh, multi-touch issues. It supported single touch very well, but uh, this is the Android browser. Uh, but there were definitely issues with multiple tracking multiple fingers. So this is this is just an example of a game here that pretty much relies on multi-touch because one hand, one finger controls the the motion, the direction of my chip, but the other finger is is like a uh, you know a shoot button. So this this is a nice demo. It's by a guy named Seb Lee from uh, I think he's London based. And he's from Brighton. Brighton, yeah. Anyway, he he made this cool demo. So this is what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we have good multi-touch support, um, tracking multiple uh, fingers. I've, I've tried up to like five or six. I'm sure we can do more. So <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah. Oh, and we've also made great leaps in hardware acceleration. So um, Canvas is now hardware accelerated. And this is partly due to Ice Cream Sandwich's native hardware acceleration support. So now we do very well on benchmarks like these. This is a speed reading benchmark from the IE team. And essentially what this does is it just flips through a bunch of letters. And you can see we're getting like nearly 60 frames here, which is pretty much on par with, uh, for my testing, with like iPhone 4S on mobile support. So we've, we've done a huge progress in those last three months of, of hard work. So this is super exciting, because now you can start building very rich um, dynamic experiences on your device. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Are there any questions that people have yet? Maybe we can talk about something that they're interested in before we jump into more. Uh, is there are there other ways for people to try Chrome for Android if they don't have an ice cream sandwich device? Yeah. So um, I believe there may be unofficial ways, um, but I don't really know. I haven't really tried. So you're on your own. <laughs> um, and then the other question is, just to confirm that you guys, uh, or that you need the Android emulator installed on your machine to use the debug features. I don't um, believe you need the emulator. No, not, not the emulator. You need uh, basically just the ADB2, uh, which is the thing that connects. And then the, the, the important thing that uh, I, I think we just briefly passed is that the the Chrome side of it is uh, you don't need anything. It's just the, the standard Chrome browser with the standard yeah, developer tools in there. So there's there's nothing special on the developer side. So you should be able to use all the tools that you're already familiar with. Mm -hmm. ADB is part of the Android SDK. Um, so that should be fairly easy mm -hmm. to find and install. Yeah. Cool. Is that oh, sort of and that's, uh, so that's the end of the questions, yeah, <laughs> uh, for now. But I'm sure we'll get more as, as we uh, progress. Cool. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so maybe we can just chat about like more on the engineering side of things. Right. Like, what were the some of some of the, the big challenges? Like, we talked a bit about GPU. Um, obviously, a phone in terms of hardware is completely different from a desktop machine. It's much more limited in terms of memory uh, available memory. Um, it's it has a lot less CPU power. Um, the memory bandwidth is different, and Chrome has this uh, multiple process architecture separating browser and the renderer in, in several different processes uh, for various reasons, uh, which made this a real challenge. 
Um, the multiple process model is something we did implement in Chrome and Android. Um, it's, it, it, it does work fine, um, but in terms, of, uh, in terms of resources on the mobile phone, that did impose some pretty interesting <coughs> challenges. Um, and another thing which we ran into um, is the readability of text and websites. Obviously, um, the hardware of a mobile phone uh, of an Android device is much more, uh, it, it's much smaller than your computer's monitor. And in that sense, uh, websites will load in a zoomed out way. Um, in order to compensate for that, uh, we've come up with a technique that's called fun boosting. And fun boosting, um, fun boosting basically is a way to increase the text size for important part of the area uh, of the web page um, to make sure that you can read them regardless of the zoom level. Um, yeah, and we already talked about GPU um, acceleration on the phone um, uh, and on the tablet as well, of course. Um, and part of part of that allowed us to um, allowed actually the Chrome GPU team to implement an incredibly well um, mul multiple threaded uh, compositor, um, which separates uh, scrolling from actual rendering, um, which is one of the main things which allowed us to achieve. Um, 60 frames per second scrolling um, and fixed position elements on the pages in, in a smooth and really workable way. Is there something people need to be aware of to like make their sites more accessible for fun boosting purposes? Or is this just something that comes for free? No, uh, fun boosting uh, comes for free. Um, there, are, there are a number of heuristics which decide um, which, which areas of the page need to be boosted. Mm -hmm. um, that there is not uh, there is not really a menu about it uh, so far, um, but th the algorithm is still under development. We're still making many improvements, um, mm -hmm. um, so there there still are a number of changes underway. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess that sort of relates. So you were talking about uh, basically rendering of sites that aren't designed for mobile. Mm -hmm. Um, but what about some of the uh, strategies for making your site more responsive for mobile? Is this something we support well? Yeah, uh, a, fr a trend that has been uh, that has been quite popular over the past few years is uh, is implementing responsive layouts for a website. Uh, for example, using media queries. Um, media queries are something from an Android sports, both on Android phones and on Android tablets. And that basically allows you to provide a convenient way of targeting uh, targeting a certain uh, a certain subset of CSS rules to certain devices, mm -hmm. um, allowing you to optimize the website more for, say, a tablet or an Android phone, mm -hmm. um, and making it more readable without having to depend on tricks such as fun boosting. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. Okay. <laughs> so you can do that with both uh, CSS. Yeah. With like media queries and text, yeah. or you can do it um, in JavaScript, right? Yeah. You can there, there is uh, there is a JavaScript API to um, to actually listen to media queries um, and actually listen to changes in media queries as well, mm -hmm. and it allows you to to have JavaScript events listening to, for example, an orientation change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the standard thing, sorry, <laughs> the standard thing is you would just usually have like. Division points for based on width, based on size of your device, and then you just swap between your um, styles. Yeah, generally that's the case. Um, of course, depending on the browsers you may target, um, it's also a solution to to have a rough size estimate for uh, for phone layouts, tablet layouts, and desktop layouts um, using percentages for widths, which allows just slightly more flexibility over um, over the Android phones, which might be used to visit your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> one thing that I was going to mention is that uh, we're very data driven, right? And uh, with the developer tools, uh, it's it's a real game changer because now we can actually see what's going on and, and optimize real deep uh, the, the, the whole experience and use the same tools uh, to gather data and performance data and then investigate and inspect all the the page and then um, yeah the the, the the developer side of it, it's a real game changer. It's, mm -hmm. I think, it's a really cool to uh, to optimize for using all these technologies that we just mentioned. So. Yeah.
So a uh, couple questions from folks who are uh, leaving questions in the comments. Um, are you going to talk about uh, some of the new input fields, native behaviors like date stickers or anything like that? Oh yeah, sure. We can talk about that. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty often requested feature. So the backstory here is, um, let's see, I have a forms list here. Yeah, so there's a, uh, the input tag can have a bunch of different types. So there's text inputs. Um, here's just a regular text input, and various other kinds. And uh, on in mobile browsers, typically, at least on iOS and other platforms, you've had this customization based on the type of input. So, you know, in a password field, uh, that's a bad example. In the telephone field, your in your keyboard now switches to a numpad because you know telephones are numeric. Um, but there's also this class of date or input fields that are date related, date time related. So here, there's a date time picker, and uh, you can see when I click it, we get the native Android control. Similar for months and weeks and and times. So this is this is all new in uh, in Chrome for Android, and um, we support you can see a whole bunch of other kinds of inputs. Does does that answer the question there? Yeah, I think that answers the question quite quite well. Great. Um, one of the other questions that came up is, um, what about uh, the UA string? Are there any modifications to that? What is the UA string today, and, and what should developers know about that? <coughs> Anyone want to do this? I can talk about it too. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so let me just actually open up the FAQ here. Mm. So we have a code site, code.google.com slash Chrome slash mobile. And if you go there, then there's an FAQ section. And I'm not sharing the screen, I think. So let me let me do that. <laughs> screen share. Whoa! <laughs> Inception moment. Okay, so we have a user agent. Okay, so this is all pretty well documented. So uh, hopefully you can see this. Basically, um, we support there's a tablet version and a mobile phone version. So here is the UA string for the mobile phone version. So this is pretty much public information. And I guess the key feature here is the CRMO. CRMO. So if you're doing UA sniffing and you want to detect Chrome for Android specifically, I guess this is what you would Detect, yeah. I mean, we can talk about best practices and like, you know, the pitfalls of UA sniffing, etc. Of course, future detection is much better. Right. <laughs> so using things like Modernizer, uh, we'll just open that up. Is generally the thing that we at from developer relations recommend. So this thing, instead of looking at user agent strings you can detect based on the actual functionality that your browser provides and you know include or not include various features. Cool. Cool. Uh, we got a couple others that, that came in. Um, what about the WebRTC camera APIs? Are they accessible right now? Um, it says they're supported in the docs, but uh, Mark was saying he was having some trouble accessing them with his code. Yeah, so WebRTC is not currently supported. The thing we do support is uh, this Android style, um, Android browser style camera input. So basically, there's a way to. Uh, this is this is a quick demo of, of that in action. And the the thing that's happening here is there's an input box, and it's got a I think uh, it's like it's special yeah, attributes. Like it's it's, uh, it's input. Um, it's actually. Um, uh, we have implemented an older. For, um, we have implemented part of the media capture API. Yeah. Um, a link to that you can find on code.google.com/chrome/mobile. Um, and part of that API, it allows you to uh, to use an input type as file uh, element um, with a certain capture attribute, um, yeah. which allows you to toggle between video um, or static image, uh, say a photo input. So if I click here. Um, this should essentially pick the. Uh, it forces the intent picker to be 
to open camera, essentially. And then this particular demo, I'll, I'll quickly take a picture of my face. And here's a picture of my face. And then I'll OK it. And we have demo effect. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's try that again. I swear it worked before. <laughs> So the point of this demo is it'll take my face and uh, put a panda face on top of my face instead. So hopefully this works. <laughs> Bam. Nice. Bam. So there you go. My face is now panda -fied. And you can check it out. Um, well, this is the URL. So, yeah. Oh, it's out of focus. But anyway, it's out there. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else there, Pete? Uh, why don't you move on to some of the next things, and we'll come back to, to some of the next ones. Okay. Sure, it sounds good. Yeah, so let's talk about um, offline technologies. So maybe you just want to like yeah, yeah, sure. Work. So um, we we have uh, support all the all the offline uh, technologies um, that uh, Chrome supports, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's uh, File API. Uh, the um, index DB, web SQL, uh, session storage, local mm -hmm. storage. So it's all there, um, and uh, and you can uh, you can manage that in the user interface as well, and clear clear out the storage as well. Mm. Um, so like, uh, how how do you so you go into settings and uh, ah, okay, uh, oh, cool. It's a, it's a much more coarsely grained. Uh, uh -huh. than, uh, than the desktop, but you don't have a lot of space, uh, you know, user interface-wise. Uh -huh. But uh, it's possible to clear storage and uh, see which sites are using how much data and so on. Cool. Um, content settings? Yeah. Content, content settings? Yeah, it's exactly it, yeah. Oh, sweet. So there you are. So um, that icon on the right uh, there is... Uh, so yeah, you can see that... Um, some of those sites are using a bit of bit of data, and and, and this means geolocation. Right, right. So that means you granted access for that site to access your. Uh, exactly, geo. exactly. Oh wow, this is really cool. I didn't know about this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so uh, all, all all the storage APIs are are, are there, hmm. um, and uh, are, are good to go. Yeah. And we also have app cache support, right? Right, right. App cache um, also. And uh, we can um, you can see good good usage of that in the uh, Gmail mm -hmm. um, and uh, calendar applications. Oh, and by the way, right? If we do app cache, I believe we have app cache internals available here as well. Uh, like if we want to clear an app cache, maybe not. Um, we should have that available. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of unstable stuff. So. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So yeah, basically, there's two things you want to do with offline, right? You want to store assets, and you want to store data, right? So there's a whole bunch of, and we we, we pretty much support the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole process, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The full uh, file API. So read and write, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And of course, part of the file system API, um, which allows you to go even further. Cool. So uh, uh, there's also um, one, one aspect uh, uh, which we'd like to improve in the future, but, uh, which is working pretty well uh, already, is the input type equals file. Mm. So you can upload files from your from your device. Mm. Um, and uh, one of the things I would like to support in the future is uh, uploading non files. You know. Uh, like uh, Picasso web images and things like that, which yeah. are not mm -hmm. raw files, but uh, it's, it's on radar at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to. Uh, cool, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like an awesome feature. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any pressing questions, or should we carry on here? Let's keep yeah, carrying right, on. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that we now include for uh, like game type applications or for uh, Experiences with rich interactive elements mm -hmm. is request animation, for, right? So this is one of the first mobile browsers yeah. to support this feature. And do you want to talk a bit about? Uh, sure. Request animation frame is basically a new API, um, a relatively new API, which allows you to um, 
which allows you to, um, instead of using a JavaScript timer or an interval, to trigger renderings or changes on your page for, say, CSS animations or, uh, or canvas elements. Um, it allows you to ask the browser to decide the best possible moment to invoke a new draw for you. Um, that has a number of benefits. For example, um, it allows the browser to, uh, to inform uh, your web page that it's currently on the background, so not visible to the end user, and especially on an, uh, on an Android device with limited battery um, and, and limited CPU usage. You don't want to use, uh, you don't want to sit on a website and have another website on the background uh, create all these awesome uh, three-dimensional effects um, <laughs> in, I don't know what API, yeah. um, which is making everything slow. Um, and using request animation frame um, can actually help you in saving uh, in saving battery power and increasing performance. Um, for example, the GPU accelerated canvas uses. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, you reminded me of a thing that I'd like to show here. Uh, you said 3D stuff, cool 3D stuff. So uh, we have a there's a quick demo that I just like to show. This is not canvas. This is CSS animation, but um, just to give you a sense of the sorts of things you can do, this is just using CSS animations. No JavaScript at all, just keyframes. Uh, and it's pretty much running, it's very smooth. I don't know if the uh, stream is good enough to tell, but I think it's like 30, 60, somewhere in between frames per second. So this is really cool. It opens up a whole world of possibilities for developers. And besides the CSS animation for actually animating it, the 3D effects can be created using the CSS 3D transforms yeah. uh, features. Yeah, as far as the transition for yeah. well, the transitions here. But you could also use transitions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are a number of websites which have, for example, um, a tilted menu uh, in the 3D space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so we had a question, I think, about. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, Bernard wanted to know uh, which countries uh, and devices are supported uh, with Chrome for Android. So countries, I think there's a list probably on our, like the Chrome consumer um, site. Yeah, th there there is a list available on um, on the Chrome help pages on Google.com. Yeah. Um, so we'll post that in the, in the comments in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's good. And what about um, devices or devices? So I think pretty much the all the official ice cream sandwich yeah. devices support, yeah. which is Galaxy Nexus, uh, Nexus S, and the Zoom tablet. Yeah, and um, and new devices which uh, which will be updated to ice cream sandwich should also come with um, with the ability to install Chrome in it. And uh, one thing to, to remember is that we literally just launched this like past last week or last week, right? So yeah. we're going to expand this. Um, it, it, it's on our radar to expand it. And the limitation is just because we really just released. Uh, yeah, it's been <laughs> nine days. Yeah, exciting, very exciting days. <laughs> 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 it's it's a baby. It's just born. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else there, Pete? Cool. No, that's it for now. Uh, but keep your co questions coming in the comments yeah. uh, on the Chrome developers page, and uh, we'll keep going from there. Cool. Um, so let's talk about device API. Okay. So yeah, what sort of what sort of uh, you know sensor access do we have in Chrome for Android? Yeah. So uh, on Chrome for uh, we have basically the same APIs that we have uh, on Chrome on desktop. Uh, geolocation we already had in, in, in Chrome Desktop for for a while, mm -hmm. and then on the on the device you can request for a high accuracy, and that would turn on the GPS sensor. Uh, of course, if there is a, a GPS sensor on the device, and then you have a far greater accuracy you know, on, on the geo geolocation position. Um, and then another cool thing is that uh, the device orientation. So we implemented on desktop first, and it was kind of tough to test because we tested on a notebook and it doesn't make much sense for you to like turn your notebook around and I think we probably <laughs> put some hard drives just like moving things around and try to see if it was working uh, and it makes far far more sense in a, in a real small device that you can literally turn around and, and move around and see where you're heading to and your bearings and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all, all these device APIs are available for, for 
Android, and yeah, exactly the same as Chrome for, for desktop, only more useful. <laughs> yeah. We had a, there was a cool demo. Oh, yeah, let me show, let me show that one. Uh, just one second. Hang on. So this is a, a cool demo. Yeah, there you go. So this is, yeah, like a compass uh, and this using device orientation. I don't think so. Uh, and then, yeah, you can see where north is uh, and this is using device orientation. And uh, yeah, if I move around. Um, so this is, this is a pretty cool demo. I just I just found out like five minutes before in here, uh, <laughs> but it's it, it's really cool and it shows all the capabilities of the device, mm -hmm. and it's so much nicer to do this on my phone than my desktop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No problem. Cool. Yeah. Right, and then we we also talked about already the basic camera access. So. That's that's what we have today. We'll see about the future. Um, okay. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, I was gonna show. I was gonna show a demo on a tablet, but I forgot that. Okay. <laughs> Can't do that one. Um, let's see what what else do we have. Right. So maybe just small things for developers to think about when they build mobile web apps, or mobile websites, or experiences. So I guess the first thing that comes to mind is viewport considerations. Right? So uh, I mean, you, the, basic, the basic idea there is you want to be able to specify which part of the screen to show on a smaller display, right? Maybe you can elaborate a little. Um, well, one of the things to keep in mind, um, there is the meta viewport uh, element, uh, which is also supported by Chrome and Android, and it allows you to um, to set the initial zoom level. Um, if you really need to, you can decide the minimum and the maximum zoom levels there. You could even uh, disable zooming. Of course, you should only do that if it's if it's really critical for your website um, to only be available in your zoom of choice, mm -hmm. um, especially with uh, different screen sizes. Um, or, for example, make a comparison between Android phones and Android tablets um, that could end up pretty nasty for the end user. Um, but using that technique, you can um, you can also decide um, the width, the initial width of the viewport, uh, whether it should be equal to the device width or an, uh, or a different, uh, basically a width of your choice. Um, and together uh, together with the meta viewport element um, and say media queries and um, using just general responsive layouts, percentage-based widths. Um, you should be able to um, also utilize the developer tools, of course, to quickly get up to speed to develop uh, to develop for mobile Android devices. Cool. cool. Any other things come to mind as far as like mobile specific considerations? Um, not, not specifically. But I think power users is one thing. So try to avoid like tight loops or, or yeah. use the uh, request. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, th I think that that's a, an important consideration. Hmm. Cool. Maybe let's talk about the dev tools and maybe some of the, the coolest features that you guys think are, are most interesting for the mobile context. I think one of the main interesting things uh, to witness on a mobile phone is what uh, is the developer tools uh, network panel, because it allows you to see the latencies um, and the basically the loading performance of um, of the resources available for a mobile website, mm -hmm. um, and especially in terms of optimizing for mobile uh, connections in which the a round trip time to the server so to get an additional file um, is much more expensive than to actually get a bigger file. Um, of course, depending on the network which you're on. Yeah. Um, that can differ a lot. But the, I think that the network panel can give some really valuable insights. Um, yeah. Besides that, there's, of course, the resource panel, which allows you to see everything which is being loaded on the page. You can see the, you can see the dump tree, all the elements on the page, the scripting panel for the scripts, and modify them in real time. Um, of course, already showed with the alert uh, model dialog. Right, so the resources resources gives you a full list of everything that's loaded. Yeah. You can also sort, see the storage APIs, um, the uh, 
the various web SQL databases and cookies and uh, site storage for her. Awesome. This is right on the device. <coughs> Look at that. Very cool. Right, profiling also is a big deal, right? For mobile? Yeah. Before this is like very difficult. Yeah. Essentially without yeah. any yeah. instrumentation. Yeah. Right. So now you, right. you, you have the data and you can actually yeah. make your trade offs and decisions and optimize for, for the real thing rather than just mm -hmm. wishful thinking like you have concrete. Right. <laughs> yeah, so you can get a full breakdown of exactly what part of your app is slow. Right. So if I start profiling, let's see if this actually works. Scroll around. We're profiling Google Maps here. Bam. So we have a full breakdown here. Whoa. We can just get the full line numbers at 12. Yeah, sure yeah, the code is obfuscated. Yeah, yeah the, the, the software is obfuscated, but you, you get a complete picture of your, um, your profile. Sure. Whoa. And of course, besides the profiler, there is also the timeline panel, mm -hmm. uh, which allows you to get a graph of, uh, of the loading times and the painting times of everything on your page. A script execution times, and that hmm. can be quite insightful as well. Yeah. Actually, going back to scripts here, let's see if this works. I mean, oh no. Uh, basically, there's this. My, one of my favorite features here is this uh, pretty print thing. <laughs> Maybe a bit ambitious to try to pretty print <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what happens. Just for fun. So I pressed the pretty print button. <laughs> when they go out. Oh, oh, nice. oh. <laughs> so now we have like oh, now nice. go ahead and <laughs> debug Google Maps. You said you can just set a breakpoint on line wow, we're at line ten thousand now. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, this is this is an awesome feature. I mean all these things are just game changers for yeah. for mobile debugging. So yeah, not just mobile debugging, right? But right across the board, yes. this is exactly the same tools that uh, you would use on a desktop. So you can have just one single, very comfortable environment to target everything in the world. So that, that is really, really cool. Cool. So uh, there's a question. Uh, again, <coughs> we're talking to Ben, a great participant today. Thanks, <laughs> thanks to Mark. Um, he wants to know what the difference is uh, between how elements are rendered in Chrome for Android and stock, the stock Android browser. Uh, for example, he says, I know uh, Chrome supports uh, fixed elements, uh, or fixed position elements. How does that all sort of fit together? Hmm. Um, of course, the Android browser and Chrome and Android Pro, uh, both share the WebKit rendering engine. Um, but besides sharing, uh, WebKit basically supports uh, as two main layers. It has WebCore, which is the rendering part, and then it has WebKit, which is an API to the browser itself. Um, and that, that API is important because it tells, um, that allows the browser to determine how a website should be displayed, uh, for example, how rendering works, how scrolling works. Um, and uh, the Android browser has a different um, has a different API implementation than uh, than Chrome and Android has. We actually share that API with a normal desktop Chrome, um, and it it definitely can explain um, the differences in how we handle things, um, how we implement APIs, and um, for example, the content settings which you showed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's it's one of the reasons why we're able to provide. Uh, a consistent and nice uh, overview of everything a base is able to do. Yeah. yeah, that's this one, right? Yeah, so cool. <laughs> yeah, and I guess also there may be differences in the WebKit version that the two respective browsers use. Yeah, so um, we may be uh, poised to be more ahead. Yeah, just because of us being or from Android being an app bundled. Uh, that's this, it's available from the market. And mm -hmm. Updates are available from the market. Yeah. So uh, th 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 that's an important point because uh, Chrome for Android is uh, it's Chrome essentially. So 
uh, we'll, we'll be getting all the features uh, or all the features that make sense on a mobile uh, device that we get on Chrome Desktop because we're sharing exactly the same uh, WebKit layer as right. Chrome uh, and um, the other browsers are slightly different. We share the, the same web core, but the WebKit API is slightly different. But uh, on Chrome for Android uh, is exactly the same as the Chrome Desktop with for some additions. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is very important going forward that we will be following Chrome model and yeah, yeah. And I guess. It's important to point out that lately, the focus of the engineering team has been to upstream as much code as possible to the open source Chromium project. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, right that, that's the reason <laughs> we are here in <laughs> Southern California. <so>. Right. <laughs> right now, what we're doing is, um, if you go to code.google.com slash chrome slash mobile, uh, on the frequently asked questions page, there is a link. Um, if you want to see uh, the source code, um, at least uh, the important source code right now of Chrome and Android, yeah. Um, but what we're doing right now is getting rid of the differences and adding all our source code to the Chromium and WebKit repositories um, to make sure that we can um, to make sure that we can become consistent as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, sorry, I was just trying to show the FAQ page, but ah, the thing is, anyway, it's on the FAQ page. <laughs> <laughs> mm, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah. So there's a question, right, Pete? About um, yeah. So there was a question uh, wanting to know. Um, sorry, I just have to pop back and find it. Um, when will it be available for other countries? Right. And then as well, um, can you say anything about supporting the Chrome Web Store? So um, we're working hard to expand to other countries, yeah. but I don't think there's any concrete plans. Anytime soon, I think yeah. is the, the real answer. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be hopefully. Yeah, we'll be everywhere. It's yeah. literally just a baby. So please bear with us. Yeah, it's uh, been we, nine need, days. we need to grow. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to feed like babies forms and <laughs> but it, it will be available uh, anytime soon. Hey Mark. Hey guys, thanks for doing this um, hangout. So anyway, I'm trying to screen share this, but I can't. Uh, the other question, <laughs> the other question was to do with uh, the Chrome Web Store and support for that. Right? So yeah, there's there's no plans. This is again we're launched nine days ago, so uh, no plans for this. And I would love to share a page with a bunch of resources where you can like log bugs, ask questions. We can send the links, so all the links after. Yeah, so we'll post the yeah. links after. But Mark had another question uh, that he posted in the comments. Mark, I'll let you ask it actually in person. OK. Um, so uh, I've been using it. I have a Transformer Prime. Okay. And oh, I've been Mark, I think you're muted. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. OK. Um, I have a Transformer Prime, and I've been using Chrome on that for the last few days. Yeah. Um, it's been working great. But uh, I have had a few times where it's had some weird bugs. And I was wondering, what is the best way to report those to you guys? Yeah, Mark, could you repeat? We missed the first part. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. So basically, I've just been okay. using Chrome over best the last way to file bugs. Okay. okay. So yeah. um, the best way to file bugs is you. We've made a short link. Basically, you go to new.mcrbug.com. And that will take you directly to the uh, Chromium bug tracker with the correct uh, bug template. And then you just fill that form in, and you're set. And on that note, actually, what I was trying to show, and I still am failing to screen share, uh, if you go to mcrbug.com, that will it'll give you a list of uh, all of the bugs logged against OS Android, which is the new component in uh, in the Chromium bug track that tracks mobile issues, or that tracks Chrome for Android issues. And you can, the, the cool thing there is you can see the number of stars. And it's, it's actually by default ranked in star order. So you'll see things like WebGL support, which is uh, highly, um, highly ranked, as well as other things that uh, people have been logging, et cetera. So uh, yeah, that's 
those are the two bug logging venues. And if you have developer questions, we're trying to encourage people to ask them on Stack Overflow using both the Chrome, Google Dash Chrome tag as well as an Android tag. So if you if you log your question with both tags, then uh, that automatically goes into my uh, inbox, basically. And we have other people looking at that as well. So that's that's the best uh, way to do that. Okay, so we're at we're pretty close to the end actually. Oh yeah, so uh, I heard there's an Easter egg somewhere in the uh, product. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. We 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 heard yeah. that too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you, maybe you guys will find it sometime. Just let us know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we talked about feedback, giving feedback to the Eng team. We talked about the code site, so code.google.com slash Chrome slash mobile. Yes, in addition to that, the Chrome site also has excellent, uh, excellent documentation available on how to install the Android SDK mm -hmm. and actually start using what the, the developer tools. Right, so. that's a good guide. It's also a video, yeah. just walking through. Um, as well as a dedicated site for Chrome developer tools, right? So there's a whole page about how to use that stuff. And we should include that as a link. Mm -hmm. um, other things? Oh, yes. HTML5 Rocks. So HTML5 Rocks is a great resource for a lot of these things, a lot of the HTML5 features that we talked about today. So there's actually a specific mobile page that, again, we'll link you to. But there's you know, general web platform features, such as, you know, IndexedDB, and we have guides about IndexedDB on that page. So if you have questions related, related to that kind of technology, it's a good go-to place for you. So um, maybe we'll take any last-minute questions, if there are any. Uh, looks like we've addressed pretty much all of the questions uh, that you guys, that everybody's asked. So, right. Right. Well, thanks for everybody for participating. I'll let you... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys have anything else to add. Um, if you can, try Chrome and Android. It's really good. Yes. Yep, I'll second that. <laughs> third and third, yeah. And we're here for the long term, so uh, don't worry, just nine days, so we'll expand everything. So. <laughs> um, one more thing, we have a Google Plus page. You can follow the Chrome developers Google Plus page, and we post a bunch of links multiple times a day, I think, around various things in the Chrome ecosystem. Um, there's something else I wanted to say. Oh yeah, we're going to try to do more of these Hangouts in the future. So, right, we have a schedule every Thursday. We will talk about things other than Chrome for Android as well as Chrome for Android. <laughs> so, join us then. All right. All right. See you guys later. Thank you. Bye-bye.